everybody and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conniger and I'm building a Kit Fox Model 7 STI. On this episode I'm going to start off with the uh, horizontal tail assembly, focusing mainly on the horizontal stabilizer and the following video after this will be the, uh, the elevator. So I'm not going to talk much, I'm going to get right into the video. I'm going to be doing some talking over most of the, most of the video and I'll be talking through the slides so that you don't have to read them yourself if you got the audio on. I do apologize in advance, some of the technical items that I'm doing in here I didn't get good close-up video of, so any, any future videos when I'm doing something technical I'll be sure to get the video in closer so we can see what's going on and that'll eliminate any questions that you guys might have going forward. So let's get into it, thank you. Horizontal tail assembly, a lot of reaming going on. Step number one is find all the parts needed to begin and maybe with a reamer. This is a reamer, what does a reamer do? Well, it creates a smooth wall in an existing hole. Holes needed of reaming on the horizontal stabilizer, there's just three out of seven. Reaming the elevator hinge tabs, some of the technical stuff. Uh, in the future, I'll get the, get the camera up close so you can see exactly what's going on. Reaming the horizontal tail brace bushings. I should have had a T-handle for most of these reamers, and I did not have one, so you see me using a vice grip or a pliers or sometimes going through some of these holes. It was just easy enough to use my fingers to, to turn the reamer, but essentially you're supposed to pull it through and turn it, but sometimes the shank wouldn't even go through the hole, so I had to, had to push it through and turn it, and uh, that's supposed to be less precise. Here I'm reaming the horizontal tail rear pivot mount, and that's up top. Down below will be the, the tail brace tabs, trim actuator mounting tabs down at the bottom. And you see me using some of that pink EPS foam. That's pretty handy to have around. I use it in, so far in quite a bit of the build. Holding the wings up off the floor and just elevating items on the bench. And it, uh, it comes in pretty handy to have some pieces of that around to help protect the fuselage and any other tender parts. You may have noticed the ribs were already installed as I'm reaming the holes. Step one, this was due to the Amazon order delays. I was missing the largest reamer, which I needed for the elevator hinge bushings. That ended up coming in about five or six days later, so I went ahead and started. Finding all the parts to begin while referencing the inventory manual and marking things off as I go. Some nuts, bolts, and bushings were needed to tie the horizontal stabilizer to the elevator, so I was locating those using the inventory to find the box and uh, get everything organized. After locating the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator, I then needed to find the ribs pertaining to each member, respectively. I found those, stacked them there up on top of the horizontal stabilizer. I pulled the instructions for the rib layout out of the manual and placed it on the bench for faster reference while laying out the ribs on both of the control surfaces. Here I was laying out the, the markings on the horizontal stabilizer and transferring those marks over to the elevator. And then I realized that that tab that's sticking up in the video should have been down, so I had to flip it over and transfer the marks back over to the other side of the, the elevator. Separate all the ribs, remove them. There's some moleskin-like tape on them you'll see here in this in this picture with the red arrow. I didn't, that kind of keeps them all separated as they're, as they're taped up. Then you can start sanding, otherwise you gotta sand through that tape and it it's just as easy to peel off. Here you can see me using the sandpaper over the leading and the trailing edges of the tubing to finish sanding each rib. They're uh, perfect templates, so I thought they'd be uh, good to use in this scenario.
dry fit set up. Got everything ready to ready to high solve. Cut rib stiffeners as needed for the ribs. Remember the stiffeners are only to keep the ribs from bowing and only need to be installed on ribs you feel need the support. Now I'm getting ready to prep the ribs. So I pull all the ribs that will get the stiffeners attached based off my opinion. I mark the top of each one with a sharpie to ensure proper return placement after stiffener adhesion and then I sanded them all. I wanted to make sure all my ribs were, or all my stiffeners were on one side and I put everything back. So next is the modeler's glue, the accelerator, the high saw, two parts, uh, cooking scale to measure one to one, and the cotton flocks, and your syringe or preferred applicator. I use the modeler's glue to temporarily attach the stiffener prior to the final adhesion using high saw. Basically it's like super glue, but I've heard you don't want to use super glue because uh, it doesn't work well. So I just uh, mixed up the the one to one high saw, and I did it in this on this step because I thought it was pretty easy. And I thought, well, if I make a mistake, um, at least it's on something small and not something already attached to the uh, to the airfoil. So here they are, glued up. My first fillets and a little overall photo and I'll bring in for a little close-up of the fillets. Again, very first fillets, so they're a little thick. I probably should have knocked them down like you'd do if you were caulking that. A uh, smaller nozzle on the syringe probably would have helped immensely, but uh, I actually went out and bought some smaller syringes. But uh, since the nozzles were smaller, they were also shorter and harder to get up close when it came time to adhere them to, to the metal. So this is about eight hours later. I pulled everything apart. I wipe everything down with denatured alcohol. You scuff the areas that you're going to adhere to with Scotch-Brite and then wipe it again with denatured alcohol. You don't have to scuff the entire um, horizontal stabilizer, just the areas where you're going to actually apply the adhesion to the fuselage or to, the, to this surface. Here you can see me putting the ribs in, hitting them front and back with a little bit of high saw. And those that are up against a metal framing member, I just attached a little bit to the back. The next day, everything that was on top was set up. So I'm following up with another small batch to fill in areas underneath that I didn't adhere previously. Since the high sole doesn't run, this is something that you could have done the first day. I just ran out and it was a good stopping point. So I thought I'll get it the next day. Now I'm getting ready to do the uh, the end caps, which are a piece of foam, or you could use uh, balsa wood, but the balsa wood's not supplied, the foam is. So you cut and shape the foam box for the horizontal end caps to fit the tubing. Uh, bond the pieces in and let it adhesive cure. Balsa wood blocks not supplied. Cut and shape the foam blocks for horizontal and elevator caps to fit the tubing. Bond the pieces in and let the adhesive cure. Balsa wood blocks are not supplied, but may be used in place of the foam. So you're shaping the end caps to pleasing for pleasing contour with the surrounding tail surfaces using sandpaper and a file. I just used sandpaper. So when you're satisfied with the final shape of the end caps, coat the exposed surfaces or of the foam or balsa wood with a thin layer of structural adhesive. Here I am opening up that, that foam. And sanding this stuff was like sanding cotton candy. It was very brittle, it was a little dusty, but I just had my portable vacuum around there. So once I made a mess, I just vacuumed it up. They sand down quickly, so you wanna be careful. And I just cut a little block that was about the length of, uh, of that piece and started sanding it to get it to fit in there. I didn't, I never used a file, just sandpaper. And I ended up doing one for each top and bottom of the left side and one for each of the other, the other end. I have them labeled as such, so when I go back, I can uh, pick up where I left off and I know which one goes on which side and where. And they're pretty much custom fit, so one, one isn't gonna fit in another location. And I just chip away at it slowly and steadily until it fits in there better and it's gonna be covered with more high saw, so 
you're not really going to see it. You want to make sure it adheres well or fits up against that, that wooden piece, that wooden rib that's in there and makes good contact with the, uh, the metal portion of the horizontal stabilizer. And then the excess you're just going to sand off like I'm doing right here. Pro tip when mixing up the high saw, I used the two parts, one part epoxy, one part hardener, and uh, stuck it in the syringe. And then when I finished, I watched Spectre Fox's video on how he was doing it, and I noticed many guys were trying to clean out their syringes when they're done. I just set the syringe down, came back the next day, gave it a little tweaking from the epoxy let loose from the syringe. I pulled the plunger out popped a small nail in the end of the syringe port and that little chunk of glue popped right out and it was clean as can be. So I was able to mix up some more high saw and stick it back in and continue from there. So just wanted to give everybody that little tip. In this next section, I'm getting ready to press the bearings into the elevator hinge mounting bushings in six places. And after that, I'll be pressing in the bearings to the aft center elevator hinge and then the bushings will go in the other six hinge mounting bushings. I had a problem with this, it was my first time, so I made a mistake with the, the first one. I tried to push it in there, it wasn't quite sanded down enough, so you might see me beating on it with a, a wooden block lightly. I was trying to tap it lightly, I got a hammer out and I said, I'm not going to use a hammer. So did a little searching on YouTube, but I found a, the best method is to get a longer bolt with a couple small washers, about the size of some dimes. Put that bolt through the hole, through the, through the bushing slide that, make sure it's sanded properly so you can actually fit it in those holes with your fingers. Apply a little bit of Loctite to cover the, the bonding surfaces, slide it in the hole, and if it's a little bit friction fit, if, there's, if it won't quite go in, that's when you tighten up the nut and the washers on each end, and that it just pulls it right into the hole. And in, the next time I do this, I'll be sure to get a good close-up video of it so you all can see what's going on. Here I am just scuffing up with some Scotch-Brite the inside of those holes before I put in the rest of the, the bushings. Since I put that first bushing in down on the far end and had a problem with it, I decided to go ahead and make sure they were all scuffed up good, properly uh, reamed out. filing down the bushing a little bit. Just slide it over a uh, bolt with a lock washer on it. Tighten up the nut to compress it just a little bit so it doesn't move. Chuck that uh, bolt in there. Hit it with a little 200 grit first. Follow it up with a little 400. A little uh, scratch break. Shines it up nice. You can see how shiny it is. And then test fit it. Thanks again for watching, and uh, hopefully, in the next video, we'll work on the elevator and you'll get to see a little bit in better detail of me putting in the ribs. Try to get the camera a little bit closer so you can see the, the finer details, and then uh, moving forward. I'll get even better shots of the, the minute details. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit the like and the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get some notifications for a future video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.